Alright, alright, welcome back to another episode of Sakura Succubus 4. Now, where we left off, you already know, um, we have a lot to cover. Um, I think we left off on a pretty sample start. We was actually running with Hazel, and uh, yeah, gotta say, gotta say, everything we'll be going through. Now, remember, we're calling back to new viewers of what my last video said. I am going to be sometimes recording this without face cam sometimes with face cam because i need to make time to like post and i don't want to like forget you know so anyways let's get right into it hmm i stagger back at a used beach house covered in sweat my shirt sticking uncomfortably to my chest I wash myself off in the shower as soon as I'm able to, then tell myself dry. Do y'all see what I mean when I say, like, the reading for this is crazy? But, like I said, it is supposed to be a novel, so here we are. <laughs> Fortunately, the others don't choose to intrude upon me, and I finish my ablution in double quick time. I changed into a fresh shirt and a pair of shorts and then entered the kitchen guided by the scent of Afumi's mouth-watering cooking. She's already finished preparing most of the food and it's arranged on the table like some sort of Benkei. Please tell me if I'm butchering it. Grilled fish Pickled plums, miso soup, raw eggs over rice. Hmm. There's a lot of varied dishes, and they look delicious. Especially after my workout. Right now, I can't think of anything more attractive than carbs. You look like you've been through the wars, Hideki. Your hair is all tousled. Hifumi giggles elegantly. One hand pressed against her chest. <laughs> I, meanwhile, groan. I feel like I've been through the wars, my feet hurt, and I'm afraid I can't fit my legs anymore. Oh dear. Did you go jogging with Hazel? Yeah, I did. Didn't have much of a choice. <sighs> she descended on me while I was sleeping in the early hours of the morning. I did, not, I did try to refuse, but was so adamant I would have felt me I suppose some sort of pain shoots down my spine which makes me wince. I don't feel any healthier after my jog with Hazel in fact I feel distinctly unhealthier it's not normal to suffer back pains like this at my age damn it you poor thing Fumi shakes her head compassionately. You need to replenish the energy you've lost. Oh, my cooking is enough to satisfy you. Believe me, it'll be more than enough. You might be a succubus, but in the kitchen you're a goddess. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Eat up, then, my dear Hideki. You can have as much as you like. You earned it. If there's anything you wish to try, do not hesitate to ask. I can whip up in no time. Nothing is too much trouble for you. Thanks, Ifumi. I ease myself, gingering down in the chair, hoping incur the least amount of physical anguish possible, but for not. Another spasm of pain ripples through my back, and I have to grip my teeth together to quell it. This is misery. I feel like the cartilages have been slowly and systematically been scooped from my bones have been to be replaced with molten iron. Why would anybody do this to themselves? All joggers must be masochists of the high degree. I know it's at highest. Shut the fuck up. Hopefully Ifumi's food will help me forget about my aches and pains. Thanks for the food. I'm going to dig in. If 
there's one good thing about jogging is that I've worked up quite the appetite. Always liked the Fumi's cooking, but looks taste even more appealing now. What do you think? Fumi serves me curiously. Is the grilled macaroni? Oh, sorry. Is the grilled macaroni to your liking? I hope it isn't too potent. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you see what I mean when I say it is hard for me to read through a fucking novel? God damn it. I haven't read a novel in a while. Is the grilled mackerel to your liking? I hope it isn't too potent. No, it's incredible. The skin's nice and crispy, and the meat inside is so tender. It's full of flavor. It tastes particularly good with rice and miso soup. Thank you, Ifumi, your star. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. One does not wish to get a swollen head, after all. But thank you. <laughs> Seeing you devour my food it, so eagerly never fails to bring a smile to my face. I continue to shove food in my mouth, even when others arrive in the kitchen. First, a fresh shower... Oh, sorry. First, a freshly showered Hazel. Then... A harumphing AU in a half asleep cosmos. Why are you eating like that, Hiroki? Your food isn't going to grow legs and walk away. You ought to mind your manners. Now, now, AU, let him be. He's just tired is all. After our, the workout session I gave him, he needs to give his energy back. What workout session? Oh, you know. Hazel grins. I was so eager I couldn't hold myself back. I went to the room this morning and shocked him with all. I shocked him awake and, ins and insisted. Thought he didn't want to at first. He said he was too tired, but I persuaded him otherwise. I really put him through his paces. I'm surprised he's still standing up. His body must have been feeling the heat. Maybe he should have gone easier on him. I feel a bit bad about him now. What are you talking about? Glances at Hazel, her face is on fire. I can't believe you! You're so shameless. It's not even nine yet, and you're already talking about filth? I don't want to hear about your escapades with Hideki. I am no interested whatsoever. Huh? But I'm only talking about jogging. I think you might have given a you the wrong impression. Jeez. Seems to know how to push people's buttons, even when it's unintended. She's not the most sensitive person, or the most thoughtful, but I can't dislike her when she smiles like that. Sorry if I went too hard on you, Hideki. I tried to hold back, but when I started jockeying, something just flipped inside my head. I hope you didn't hate your time with me, at the very least. It was difficult, yeah, but I don't suppose I hate it. Sunrise was rather pretty, if nothing else. Then does that mean you want to jock me again sometimes? Now you're getting ahead of yourself. I shoot a gaze promptly before she can draw a training schedule for me. I have precisely zero interest in toning my legs and abs. I want to relax in the sun and eat the Fumi's cooking. Definitely too much to ask! <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> After eating breakfast, breakfast consumed and the strength in my legs more or less restored, <clears throat> I head to the beach with the rest of my entourage. I spend the day playing around with the others and then return to AU's beach house when the sun begins to set. The six of us sit in the living room, ideally flipping through TV channels for what of anything better to do when Hazel pipes up. Hey you guys, I just got another totally amazing idea. Another. Marina Gomes. This isn't going to be your so-called amazing ideas last night, is it? Where you told a silly, not at all scary story. For a horror story, supposedly wasn't scary at all. It sure did freak Marina out. I did feel a bit sorry, but uh, it was gratifying to see such a shy, vulnerable side of her. Hazel does want to tell more of those spooky stories. I sure then will veto it. What Hazel proposed, however is indifferent in nature, though similar in spirit, to her announcement the night prior. Nah, I think I'm through with horror stories. Jesus. 
Nah, I think I'm through with horror stories. I'm ain't the best telling them. I just can't bring my stories to life properly. I ain't good enough with words, and my vocab ain't developed enough. I tried my best, but my story didn't have enough impact. I think if Hazel's tale had even more of an impact, Marina might truly have passed out. That's because the subject matter you chose was utterly, unutterably stupid. Hey, you scuffs, her arms folded. If you want to captivate the audience with a story, you have to ensure it's worth telling first. Otherwise, it's a wasted effort. It's similar to us idols. If nobody wants to see us perform, we're worthless. It doesn't matter how much we practice, we live and die in the court of public opinion. So harsh, AU. The world is a harsh world. There's no sense in acting otherwise. I mean, she's not wrong. What I must endure on a day-to-day -day basis is far more frightening than any ghost story. Then it's good I don't tell any of the ghost stories tonight. Then I've had enough of that. I was thinking about it might be fun to have some more. Or, sorry. I was thinking it might be fun if we did something more visceral. Visceral? Cosmos tips her head on the one side, confused. You want to cut each other? Start cu oh, you want us to start cutting each other up? No, 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 nothing like that. I was just thinking, horror's something you can't experience with your ears alone. You gotta like, soak in all five of your senses. We've graduated beyond the needs of for silly stories. It's high time we face our fears head on, in the dead of night, with nothing but a flashlight to guide us. In other words, I think we should take this test of courage. Take a walk in the dark and push our nerves to the limit. What do you say? A test of courage, hmm? That sounds more amusing than telling the stories. Man, it would make a really good workout. I wouldn't mind going for a walk. It's, it's a really pretty night and the stars are so bright. I bet if I could take a bunch of photos. <laughs> I'm not opposed to the idea, either. It sounds like a novel to... Oh, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm having such a hard time. <sighs> I'm not opposed to the idea, either. It sounds like a novel way to pass the time. Alright. Hazel punches her fist in the air victoriously. Then it's decided. Let's go out there and face all the ghouls and ghosts and monsters head on. This is going to be a blast. Marina, please behave. And I'm not talking about sexually. I'm just saying. Just behave, sweetie. You're going to be fine. Marina, as must expect, looks less enthused about the idea. Less enthused about the idea, asshole. <sighs> she stares at me helplessly. A cold sweat already begins to form upon her brow. Eh, hitty she murmurs, her voice softer than the whisper. Say something to her, please. I can't let this go ahead. I can't go walk into a forest at night. It'd be bad for my heart. Stop just thinking about it. Poor Marina. She looks petrified. I do feel sorry for her, but... What do you say, Hideki? My man, are you in? See, she put me in a different situation, because... I could say it just to keep Marina's secret, but also I have to, I have to say if it's a bad idea, then I have to tell Hazel something. It's not a good idea, so fuck. Okay, yes, yeah, sure, wrong game. Sure, I think it sounds fun. Don't you agree, Marina? <laughs> Win, switch, and have a double take. What was the weird noise? You okay, Marina? Yes, um, I'm quite alright. I think I just been I've been by a mosquito. Um, if there are insects in there, I'm sure there'll be more of them out there. I do not wish to be bitten within an inch of my life. I am sure the rest of you will feel the same. Perhaps if you were prudent to remain indoors. Huh? Are you afraid of insects, Marina? I don't think you was that sensitive. No, that's not true at all. I'm not afraid of insects, so I cannot pretend. I like them. 
I said, I said that so you we have to keep it a secret. Why are you saying that? What is wrong? Good, fuck, good, 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 good for nothing. Goblins like you. <laughs> Go to hell. Ah! <laughs> Could you be nothing of the value of the society and shows not, not with, with respect for elders. I'm afraid for your sake and your pitiful future, but I'm not of you, and I'm certainly not afraid of bugs or ghosts. That was suspicious, suspiciously, specifically, specific denial. Are you sure something's not up, Marina? You're trembling an awful lot. Are you unwell? No, I'm fine. If you want to have a test of courage, then I suppose I may join you. I'm not scared in the slightest. <laughs> Marina's laughter has a faint maniac edge, and it soon tails into nothingness. She sniffles. Then she glares at me and it mumbles under her breath. I guess she was hoping that I'd veto Hazel's plan. That would have been the gentleman thing to do. But I'm pretty courage. Oh, sorry, I'm pretty curious about this test of courage. I went to see what Hazel got up in her sleeve. Not that she's wearing sleeves. But if I'm being quite honest, I wanted to see Marina make more anxious faces. She might be a mature woman, but she looks incredibly cute. She's afraid. The six of us head out, led by Hazel. She guides us across the beach, the ocean dive, black beneath the starry sky, a flashlight in hand. The family holds a second flashlight, which Hazel bequeathed her before leaving, and I have the third. As we cross the beach, Hazel then leads up up in an incline. We followed the dirt path for a while and then take a detour through the trees. The trees are tall and densely packed, so dark it's impossible to see without these flashlights. The sole of my shoes crunch against the grass which sways around me. In the foliage I can hear the sound of chirping insects. Cicadas maybe? It's not cold per se, but the air is decidingly lukewarm. I dig my hand into my pockets, shivering. Marina's shivering too, though I don't think it's because of the temperature. She's clutching her troubles wrap around her waist and glances about, her eyes wide. There's crunching sounds, and Marina, in a far cry as usual, composes herself, almost jumps out of her skin. Did, did you hear that sound? It's alright, don't worry, it's just a twig. How can you be so certain so dark? It's hard to see anything. What if there was some sort of Marina's voice down in the whisper, monster? If there was any monsters around here, I'd protect you. Don't worry, still. I grin. You're forgetting your sucky face. You're probably one of the monstrous things around here with your horns and tail. But you said I'm a monster, Hideki. No, I didn't mean it quite like that. I'm trying to console you. You're physically stronger than near humans. I bet you'll be able to be overpower any monster. That can be true, but what about ghosts? They don't have cover of bodies, as far as I know. I can use magic, but it might not have any effect upon them. I'm at their mercy. Shh, fine. I take Marina's hand in mine and squeeze it. Hope this will console her. Marina shivers. Seems some sides. But still, she still looks about us anxiously. Her eyes darted head, hair, and feather. Oh, sorry. Hither and thither. Jesus Christ. I need to remember that this is a novel. <laughs> God damn it. She looks afraid, which I guess is a reasonable answer or reaction. The forest does look pretty spooky. There's so many shadows. Any number of strange creatures could be hiding among them. I glance about, keeping a tight grip on the flashlight. If I drop it, I might be in some real trouble. The forest is pretty dense. I need to be careful where I'd be putting my feet. If not, I might slip. I wouldn't make much of a knight in shining armor lying on my ass. 
the slip up would likely do nothing to ease Marina's anxieties. How long do you expect us to walk, Hazel? It feels like it's been hours. I don't want to turn my ankle or tear my skirt. I'm getting tired. I'm not used to this much exercise. It's so dark. I can't take any, any nice pictures either. Not to worry, you two. We're almost there. We just need to go a bit further. That's what you said last time we axed. We're almost there then. But now, we're really nearly. Almost there. Sincerely? Yes, really. Hazel comes to a halt and then turns to face us. She's grinning. Her white teeth bright in a harsh yellow light exclude from her torch. Right. This should be as good of a spot as any. And begin? What are we beginning exactly? Exerts her hand from mine and then draws herself to a full height. Eyes narrowed, she forces herself to look cool and calm and not afraid. We've been walking for quite some time and I'm in my heels, no less. I'm having no desire to loiter into the dark moment no longer. Why? I have half a mind to go back home. Oh, come on, Marina. Don't back out now. We've come so far. We haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Clearly. Marina, upper lip curls. Now we have done. Tonight has been a vicinity of good. It's all been quite tr tiresome. <sighs> I've gone along with your games for quite long enough, and now I am tired. I want to be fit pretty much tonight. There's another rustle in the undergrowth, which promotes a startle squeal from her mouth. <laughs> Tips her head in one side. What does that mean? Is this some sort of emphasis? Emphasis? No, um, I, uh, Marina glances away, her wrong cheeks flushes. I meant to say, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that. That wasn't the most inconclusions of saves, but Hazel seems none of the wiser to Marina's anguishes. She bounds forth like a rabbit and then winds one arm around Marina's shoulder. Don't go. Please don't go. We need you here. So we do the test of courage properly. You mean we've yet to begun this so-called test? Did you think we had? Hazel frowned. It ain't a proper test until we split off into teams. There are six of us right now. So we need to make three teams of two. If you go, you won't be able to make the numbers properly. And I have to call this whole thing off. Let me down, please, please, please. I know it'll be a lot of fun. This is debatable. Pulls a base. But as we can go all the way here, it's a shame to retreat now. Kind of curious, too. It'd be nice if I get paired with Hideki. So we can walk through the forest together. I can cling on to him so I can prepare, pretend to be scared. Can I land about my head? Size with me. Oh, of course you would like that, wouldn't you? Although that is adorable. I fuck that. <laughs> be super romantic. As if Hideki won't want to pair with you, your clinging and grasping would only slow him down. You'd be far better off without me. With me. No, me. Me. Okay, you two. Now, now, girls, settle down. There's a little point of arguing about such things now. What do you say, Marina? Will you accompany us, or do you prefer to turn back? But, well... With that feet abashed. She used to be the center of the attention, but that's at a boarding room or fancy ball. Not in the middle of a moonlit forest. Marina isn't wearing a business suit right now, and she isn't in a plush velvet teen gone. She's wearing a white dress far simpler than her usual attire, which gives a fresh-faced, decidedly youthful look. Marina is accustomed to being in control, but here, divorced from her employees and the wealth elite who adores her, she has lost much of her status. Maybe that's why she looks so unusually abashed. If you really want me to do this, I suppose I can go along with it. 
personally, I find this often very foolish, but I would not wish to spoil your fun. And being very monogamous. Monogamous? Yeah, monogamous. So, you ought to thank me for this. I'm doing you a favor. You are indeed. Thanks a bunch, Marina, for playing so nice. It's kind of funny. Hey. I used to be kind of afraid of you after you being so mean, but you're not such a bad person after all. All the time you've been looking out for us, haven't you? Yes, that's right. I am your older sister in a sense. It's my duty to watch over you. I would not wish for any of you to come harm. Thank you very much. That's a pretty sentiment, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Now! Hazel draws her arm away from Marina and then looks between us. Here's the rules for the first test of mine. We will split up into three groups of two, like I said, with nothing but flashlights to guide us. There'll be one flashlight per group. I will be jogging around every day. Oh, sorry. I've been jogging around every day, and the last morning I stumbled upon this creepy abandoned shrine. I. Why am I not surprised? Really? All right, cool. Let's just do that, huh, Hazel? You just, you just had to find some motherfucker. God damn it! Buried deep in the woods. I wanted us to look at the shrine. The first group well, who gets there will be the winners. Do you have any questions? I do, though it'll be more of a complaint, really. Yeah, for some reason I ain't surprised. What's up, Ayu? It won't be much of a competition if you know where the shrine is already. Your team will have an unfair advantage. Maybe so, but I don't remember. Oh, of course. And I found it during the day. It'll be hard to retrace my steps at night. Everything looks kind of shamey around here. I ain't really the best at directions, you know. I can believe that. You see, to have as much as common sense as Cosmos. Don't you always say I have no common sense? Exactly. And you scuffs. Then I retract my earlier statement. Being on the team, you might be such a big advantage after all. I'm glad we got to clear that up. Any questions? Yeah, I got a real question this time. Will the winning teams receive any particular reward? Uh, I did not think of that. Hazel ponders one hand beneath the chest. I guess you can have. I can give you my autograph. Huh? <laughs> Pulls in the face. Who wants your autograph? That's such a cheap price. Hey, I'm pretty famous, I have you know. It's worth a wild bunch of money, too. Yes, yeah, so I'm famous, too, in case you didn't realize we all are, in a way apart from Hideki. For me, your autograph is more less than a single grain of rice. Oof, that's kind of harsh, eh, you? You sure you don't want my autograph? I am quite sure. I suppose I could prepare a meal for the winning team. I could cook whatever you wish for tomorrow's meat. Tomorrow's lunch. I don't know so. That's a better prize, but what if the, your team wins the win? Then I'll cook the same traditional thing. I often do. With a little consequence. I did not overlay much about my rewards. I just want to have a good time with everyone. And it would be nice, I suppose, if I could meet a real ghost. Yeah. Went this and didn't take my hand. Hold on again. Not how those doors, but Marina's palms, I can't help but note, it's pretty sweaty. God damn it. Is that what expectation, anxiety, outright fear? Do you think there's a high possibility that we'll meet any ghosts of me? Of course not. <laughs> you snorts. Ghosts don't exist, everyone knows that. Yes, of course I do. <laughs> Maybe the winner can get a gift from here. He pipes up before it, you can question Marina's usual retentions. That sounds like a prize worth fighting for. Now that's even more worthless than stupid. I don't want to read the rest of it because she's being fucking arrogant. I guess I wouldn't hate it. Fucking soon. Moving on. Wow, thanks, you. Love you, too. What? I never said I love you, you idiot. Look at your face! Yeah, yeah, I know you didn't, but you dropped enough hints. They're not at all subtle, either. 
I hope you don't think I'm stupid. I don't think you're stupid per se, but I often question your intelligence. Now, is there a sort of thing you should say about the guy you want to kiss? I don't want to kiss you! Isn't it the same thing? No, it's not. It's completely One, two, slap upside her fucking head. If a guy makes the first move, it's a... <laughs> really? It's a machine <laughs> game. If a girl makes the first move, it's an Optum game. Though the guy makes the first move in Optum games, too. People don't tend to like assertive women. What about you, Hideki? Do you prefer to kiss or be kissed? I guess I don't mind either way, as long as... People are into it, it's not a big deal. Ah, oh, I see. So you men have various tastes, so keep that in mind. And perhaps in the future I should be more assertive. Now I wonder why Cosmos was laughing like that. Is she planning something sinister? Perhaps, uh, I ought to be on my guard from now on. Okay, that's the price sorted. Get a kiss from me? When let's sort the team out. I'll be ahead of you. No, me! Don't oh, shut the fuck up, me! I know you do want to be hit a key. Honestly, I kind of do too, but we can't all fight over him. Let's draw lots here. That way, there'll be no complaining. Bold to, of Hazel to sure her fellow succubi won't find something to complain about. You is one of the most qualsome people I know. She could be in paradise, and she still finds something to turn her nose up at. Still, I've got to give Hazel some credit when it's due. Still, I've got to give Hazel some credit where it's due. Drawing lots does seem to be a better way to go about this than a free-for-all. If left to their de own devices, Cosmos and AU will no doubt start bickering. Knowing them, they each take one of their arms and then until they pop clean off their sockets. It wouldn't be the first time they've clung on to me. Unfortunately for them, I happen to like both my arms where they are, and I'd be upset to lose them. Here's some lots I prepared earlier. Hazel holds out six identical sticks. Their ends conceal of her fingers. The ends have different colors. We have got to take one and then pair off with whoever stick this colors matching theirs. I think that sounds fair. Nobody has a complaint with Hazel's proposal, so we follow along with it. We all select the stick and examine beneath the muted moonlight. I'm gonna end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like, also hit that subscribe button. It's been it, guys. Later. My